What's up church photographers, I'm Robbie Dolan and I'm going to talk a little bit about taking pictures in a church auditorium. First thing you wanna be aware of is doing your best not to be a distraction to people that are worshiping in the auditorium or listening to the sermon. Some ways to do that is to wear as much black as possible, try to stay in the shadows or the sides. If you do go up the middle, once you're up in the middle, you can try to take an empty seat and use that as a place to take pictures from. You definitely don't wanna use a flash. You wanna to try to compensate by changing your settings, raising your ISO, or having a lens that'll go down to a lower aperture. The auditorium can be a difficult place to take pictures in. There's a lot of high contrast lighting situations. The stage is lit for you, but the audience typically isn't. So what you wanna do is take pictures of the people on stage and make sure that you don't blow out the highlights. And then when you turn your camera to the audience members, you're gonna to have to raise up different settings to get more light into your camera. This will allow you to take pictures in those first few rows that are illuminated by the stage lights. You wanna get creative when taking pictures in an auditorium. We've all seen the pictures of the people raising their hands from the back of the room, but don't be scared to get up a little bit closer or get to one of the sides of the stage and look back at the attenders so you can actually see people's faces as they worship. Before I take pictures in the auditorium, I like to go and talk to the worship pastor and get a set list of the songs that they're gonna be playing. Depending on how many songs that the worship band is gonna play, I'll usually use the first half to take pictures of the band on stage and let the attenders kind of get into the worship environment. And then for the last two songs, I wait for the moments where the band's really rising up and people are being moved by the Spirit of God to take pictures of what's happening within the audience. We like to say at my church that our band are worshipers first and musicians second. And so when you're taking pictures of them, try to focus on worshipful moments that the band is having as they're playing on stage. You can do this by focusing on when they have their hands raised or in a moment when they close their eyes and are just involved in the moment. Because remember, you're not just taking pictures of a band, you're taking pictures of worship. So we've talked about not being a distraction to the attenders, but we also need to be sure to not be a distraction to anyone that's speaking on stage. Ways to do this is to pay attention to how they move and where they're looking. You can try to keep your movement to a minimum, or also when they're looking a different direction, use that time to move to a different spot. If you really wanna get up close and personal photos of the band, ask the worship pastor if you can get there during sound check and see if it's okay for you to walk around on stage as they're practicing and take pictures of people that you would never be able to get during the actual worship service. If you're often taking pictures in your auditorium, the photos might start looking a little repetitive. So what you can do is start trying to think outside the box. Think more detail-minded. You always want to show relational community even within worship. So you want to show the band and the people. But there are other shots you can take, like of the guitar player's um, pedal board, or the bass player and the strings, or some maybe just the snare drum and some of the things that are going on. Designers can use those more artistic shots to promote worship nights or really any other event that's happening within the auditorium. In fact, you can even take a picture of empty chairs and use that to promote that you have space for more people to come to your church. All right, so now that we have all of our images that we just shot, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through my workflow and a little bit on how I edit the images. And so to do that, what we're gonna do is actually use Bridge, and I can drag my entire folder here into Bridge, which comes with Photoshop. And then you can select a photo, hit the space bar to make it big, and then if you like this particular photo, you can hit the number one to use it, or number zero to get away, or you can choose any number, uh, it's two, three, four, or five, so you can do all the different stars on there, so you can uh, select them, group them, and decide what you wanna do with them. So, I've actually gone through here and picked out the different ones I'm gonna use, and I just picked the bare minimum. I wanna be real strict on the images that I'm picking. I know we're gonna shoot a whole lot of images, and we wanna break that down to just the favorites. Now, it's real important to really um, appreciate the images that you're choosing and to really be proud of them. Because when you use them with social media, uh, with, depending on where you're gonna be using them, uh, many, many people can see these images. And so we wanna make sure that the excellence level of all of them is up to the standards of what we're looking for. So here are the 11 images. 
Uh, this one here, uh, it's just a real worshipful moment, and so I wanted to go ahead and choose this one. I'm probably gonna crop it down a little bit. Um, this one here is the same type. There's, you can catch a little bit of movement, um, and you see multiple people that are singing on stage. Um, this is what most churches are gonna have a hard time with, especially the photographers when you're trying to shoot into a really dark lit area, but there's a moment going on that you want to show off. And so I'm going to walk you through on editing this image to get it to be a usable uh, image for you. Uh, then there's shooting from behind and shooting the, the crowd out of focus with the worship team on stage and the lyrics on the screen, which I love getting to show the lyrics. It tells so much more of a story of what the people are actually saying as they worship. Um, here's another one, it's the same type of same type of image, just a bit closer, same with that one. And so now that we have these images, we're gonna go ahead and select all. And I'm just gonna bring this down and I'm gonna put these they're in my raw unused at the moment and I'm gonna put them into my raw folder. And then I'm gonna drag those images into Lightroom. All right, so now that we have our images loaded to Lightroom, I'm gonna go through, and I think I'm actually gonna pick this one, which is probably gonna be the most difficult to edit. So here we are. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just try my luck again with the auto button. And so that's gonna make it way too bright and grainy. I'm also noticing that their skin tones here are really blue. Um, I try never to go black and white uh, because Black and white will hide a lot of things, um, and it's easy to go black and white on most images. So if I can make it color and load it for people to use, they can choose to make it black and white if they want to, but they can't take a black and white image and make it color. So let's see if we can make this one work in color. I'm gonna adjust my white balance. I try to bring in some of those skin tones. You can see how yellow we have to go to compensate for those blue lights that were on them. I'm gonna bring up my contrast a bit more. I'm also gonna crop in to bring in that focus. And I'm putting him right on this left third. And then I'm putting her eyes on this top third, which is nice and appealing to the eye. So now, let's see, I have just a slight saturation here. A little bit more vibrance just to really bring out the, the tones and the color here. I'm gonna let those highlights come back in a bit more. And same with these whites. And now what I'm gonna do is come down here and I have noise reduction. And if I zoom in, you can see all that noise there. Even though my settings, I was at ISO 2000. Uh, so I guess if I would have had a different lens on, I could have taken the aperture down a bit, which would have allowed me to reduce the ISO. Um, but for the most part, this is actually pretty good. So now we're gonna take down this noise reduction. You barely wanna use any of this. Since if, well, I'll show you what it looks like if I do too much. It'll kind of flatten out and make everything look like it has a soft focus. So right about there is probably a good place to have it. If you back out, you can see it's much smoother and there's less grain, especially here in these blacks. I think I'm actually gonna take up even more yellow. There we go. And maybe just a little bit of green. And lastly, I'm gonna see how, how much brighter I can get this. So right about, right about there, I think is gonna work. Um, actually, one more thing that I'm gonna do is use this gradient tool here and back on the darken. And I'm just gonna darken these chairs that are below them that are kind of distracting. And I'm actually gonna take the highlights down slightly in the chairs as well. There we go. And so now, if we take that away, you can see how bright all of this is and how it takes away from them. But if we add that back in, there that. You can see how now your eyes allowed to focus back on your subjects a bit more. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about 
why I chose this particular image. Uh, here's like three or four things that I really like about it. Um, you have vanishing lines. There's a, a line right here that you can see. We have multicultural in here. It's a young urban modern uh, couple that is worshiping. Both of them are worshiping in a visual way that translates well for photography. And if you want to even read a little more into it, you can see this she's pregnant here and you can actually start to develop a story just by looking at this one image. So we've all seen the image with the silhouetted Reddy's hands during, uh, during worship with the band out of focus or the hands kind of out of focus. What you're looking for when you do this is the moment to happen. So you're gonna to wanna to wait for the chorus or that moment in the song where the, the band is really elevating it and so the attenders kind of flow with how they're being led in worship. If you're taking a picture from behind of everybody worshiping, you're gonna to wanna to wait for that moment when all the hands go up and take the picture then, not when nothing's happening and you just see heads. Another thing I like to look for is people in the first three rows that are worshiping. And you can see in this image here how we, they're not so much silhouetted and you can see their hands, see them. And then when you capture the worship pastor or any of the people on stage worshiping as well, it really tells the story of everyone worshiping together. Taking pictures in the auditorium might not be the easiest thing, but after time, you'll definitely get to a place where you're gonna love the images that you get. Because remember, you're not just taking pictures, you're capturing life change as it happens.